Hey everybody! Alright, well this was supposed to be the uh, initial startup of the sniper video, but when I turned on the fuel pump the other day to check for leaks, the sniper kind of started to come online and I honestly didn't want to turn it off just because I didn't want to mess anything up, so I grabbed all my instructions and just went ahead and did it. Um, sorry for that, I was really wanting to just start it up with you guys, but um, that being said, as far as the initial startup went, uh, first time I hit the key after the pump stopped, it fired, ran for, I don't know, maybe 1001, maybe 1002, and then died. And I was like, uh-oh. So turned everything off, waited a few seconds, hit the key again, did the exact same thing after the pump primed for a few seconds and stopped started up just for a couple of seconds, died out again, and again I'm sitting there going, uh oh. So I did it, shut it off again, and I thought, well, I'll try it one more time. And on the third time, started up, sat there, idled. Um, as you as I was looking at the screen, things were going all over the place, so it was trying to learn, trying to idle. Actually the idle really wasn't bad. So but um anyway so that's where it's at now I did take it for a test drive uh, one thing I did notice is my battery voltage I guess if it drops under 12.5 it shows up as um, illuminates like a yellow block a yellow square around it if it's under that just as a kind of a warning and I did tighten up the belt tried it again still kind of the same thing so I think probably my little 65 amp alternator that I had um, now that it's trying to run HEI electric fuel pump the EFI um, the air conditioning it's probably just a little bit too small so I went ahead and I was going to order a hundred amp but uh, I re vaguely remember when I was doing the wiring they said if you want to do a hundred amp uh, to put a thicker wire which I didn't do because I didn't plan on running anything that massive so I just stayed with the wiring that painless scent and I'm gonna go ahead and bump it up to an 85 hopefully that's it like I said it's kinda hovers right around 12 goes down to maybe 11 8 12 2 right in there when I'm actually cruising around um, at idle it'll sometimes go up to between 12 2 and 12 6 maybe but uh, so I don't think it's off too too far but I'm going to go ahead and, uh, well actually I did, I already ordered an 85 amp alternator, so as soon as that shows up I'll go ahead and put that on, hopefully that will cure the problem. Uh, the other thing, the air conditioning, after I got it running, I thought well, let me try kicking the air on just for the heck of it, because I got to that stage in the uh, wizard, and or in the instruction book, and you know what, I kicked it on, it came on, it worked fine, the EFI compensated, boosted my idle up, so I don't even know if I need that little orange wire. I'm really confused as to what the purpose of that is. So, like I said, it seems to just keep up with the idle right where I wanted it. Um, but anyways, enough of me gabbing. Uh, let's get inside, and I'll go ahead and uh, start it up, let you guys see how it starts and what's going on. All right, so... Here's the little handheld. Um, what I did is I had an opening here where my cigarette tr uh, ashtray actually went, which I didn't have and I was unable to find one. Of course, I didn't look very hard, but um, so it actually worked out good. It came with a little mounting bracket for the handheld, so I mounted the bracket in there. And then, obviously there, it doesn't stay on its own. It's just, you know, so I can show you guys and then I stick it in there when I'm done. But if I want to do any tuning, then I just kind of pull it out. And I just didn't want it sitting out there on display. Um, so I'd rather have it kind of tucked out of the way. And when I need it, I can use it. But uh, anyways, enough of me gabbing. So let me hit the key here. And screen comes on. I can get rid of the glare. Give it a few seconds there. And the pump actually stopped. Screen is live, 12.1. And here we go. And as you can see, my foot didn't touch the gas. Idle's picking up. On the Wizard, I actually had set the uh, idle a little... Well, no, actually, about 750. 
is or actually it's 750 is what I had set it at. Um, and initial start, and then after it's warm, it's a little bit higher. I was looking over the instructions. I guess what you're supposed to do is probably after you kind of get everything sort of up and running, you can turn the idle screw outside. But of course, when you turn the idle screw outside, um, it can affect your throttle position sensor, which is supposed to read zero, unless of course you're on the throttle. Um, the other thing was the IAC. Where the heck is that on there? All oh, right here. Um, it can change that as well. So I think ideally, if I remember right, somewhere it was saying about five is what you want that at. So I probably need to turn that a little bit. I haven't done it yet. Um, I just wanted to get a little bit of driving on the car. So once I feel like it's kind of learned enough that I can go from there, I will go ahead and uh, do that. I may just wait and add that onto this video as well. But um, anyway, so there it is, you know, all in all, pretty happy with it. I probably drove it maybe, took a little ride to the neighboring town. I would say it's probably a round trip, 30 miles maybe. And it actually did learn when I first took off. I was thinking, boy, this thing feels worse than the carburetor, real sluggish, just not good. But um, the more I drove it and varied the throttle, you know, kind of goosed it a little bit, kind of just putzed around. It did seem to learn um, after a while started running better than it did with the carburetor which I kind of thought I had that carburetor tuned pretty decent but I can definitely feel a difference in the power feel a difference and see a difference in drivability so all in all I'm gonna say it was worth it um, but you know only time will tell so but yeah as you can see the little volts are is kind of bouncing around there so once it gets over 12.5 it kind of doesn't illuminate the yellow but um, or green I don't know I'm colorblind anyways but anyways um, yeah so like I said I gotta adjust that throttle a little bit and mess with that so I may go ahead and put that as another video or something I think I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap this one up here so thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add this in. It dawned on me after I shut the camera off that uh, I probably should turn the AC on so you guys can see what's happening with that. Um, gotta watch the RPM there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the AC on. Can you still see that? It's about what? Eh, between eight, 850, I guess, thereabouts. We'll call it that. Let me put the AC on here. Wait for the compressor to click on. There it goes. And it dropped down to what, 750? So, I don't know, I guess 100 RPMs, but I didn't think it was that bad, to be honest. So, and I mean, it's cold. I haven't had it running, so, you know, that's, but there we go with the battery. As you can see, it's taken the draw on the battery. Um, and the IAC did actually change. So, it was at zero before. So the throttle did pick up a little bit to compensate for the air conditioning coming on. Let me shut it off and we can see that. It'll probably go back down to zero on the IAC. Yeah, and there it goes and the idle came back up. So I don't know. Anyways, for me, that's that's fine. I can live with that. Um, and maybe once I get the other stuff adjusted a little bit better, it may be even a better situation. But if it drops 100 RPM, I really don't care. That's That's doable. Uh, with the carburetor, it, I don't know how much it dropped. I never paid much attention, but I'm sure it was more than that because you could definitely tell that the RPMs dropped. So, anyways, just wanted to add this in and uh, let you guys know. All right, so another side note. Um, I was under the hood and I went to hook up the timing light just to check the timing. And when I put it to the battery, I noticed where I had connected the wire, the ground wire to the battery for the uh, sniper. It was actually had worked its way loose. So I went ahead and tightened it up and lo and behold we got 13.2, 13.123 on the volts. So and that's what the issue was. It's not the little 65 amp alternator, it's just the fact that wire, either I didn't tighten it enough or I don't think I forgot to tighten it, but I probably just didn't tighten it enough. So. Anyways, um, just want to let you guys know that was my mistake and it looks like it's fixed.